600,000 people go missing in the United States each year. Tens of thousands remain mysteriously missing. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Mysteriously Missing. I'm Karen. Hi, guys. I'm Justine. Our case today is David McAllister. He left his home in Bettendorf, Iowa in the early hours on Thursday, May 11, 2017. He said he'd be back that evening and was never heard from again. David's 22 years old. He was born November 26, 1995. He's about 5'9", 160 pounds. He's Caucasian with medium-length, dark blonde hair and blue eyes. His ears are pierced, and he limps on his right ankle, and he has several scars on his body from BMX riding. And his family says he is an independent and resourceful young man. Yeah, and we'll get into that BMX riding a little bit later on. That's, I think, something important about that. And, right. you know, when we were researching this case, we weren't sure if we should move forward with it because there isn't a lot of information on him. But we realized that the potential of the BMX riding and maybe an injury, which we'll get into later, is something very important to get out there that David is missing and there is a potential that he could be anywhere in the United States. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't have a car and he was last wearing a black shirt, jeans, black Converse tennis shoes. And he does have a lot of tattoos. He has an unfinished yellow and black tattoo of a cross surrounded by thorns um, covering up a goat on his arm. He has a peace sign on his back of his right shoulder. He also has a yin-yang symbol on his left shoulder, a marijuana leaf, and a 420 on his calf, a row of five stars on the right side of his chest, the word beer on the left side of his chest, an anarchy symbol between the thumb and forefinger on his right hand, a smiley face between the thumb and forefinger on his left hand, the word stay on the inside of his right elbow and the word true on the inside of his left elbow. So when he puts his arms together, it reads as stay true. And then he also has mushrooms on the top of his foot. And these tattoos are pretty important. If anybody sees him out there, that these are ways that they can identify and say, this is David McAllister. And you can find these listed on his missing poster, I believe. Yeah, there's a couple pictures. I had to actually search quite a bit because if you Google him, they don't really show that much. But on his face, there's a Facebook page we'll talk about. They have a ton of pictures of his you know, tattoos and him hanging out with friends and everything. So if you go on there, we'll also have some of our on our um, Instagram as well. You can look there. That's a great way to identify him. Right. So his family is dad, his name's Jeff, his mom is named Marilyn, and it appears he has two brothers, Joseph and Sean. And David loves the outdoors, and I'm thinking the whole family probably is involved in this. It seems like the boys were homeschooled, and the older brother worked for the Boy Scouts of America, or did work for the Boy Scouts of America. And the younger brother is into BMX riding as well, or maybe not as much, but there was a picture of him. And then he also was in the Eagle Scouts, so therefore the out-of-door experience. Yeah, and those we found that on their Facebook pages, so you can always look that up and look at their pictures too. Um, the day he went missing, though, was May 10th, 2017. It was a Wednesday, and he was last seen at home in his hometown, Bettendorf, Iowa. Yeah, so Bettendorf is the 15th largest city in the state of Iowa, and it's located in a place called the Quad Cities. The population is about 33,000 according to the 2010 census, and it's estimated to be about 35,000 in 2015, so about the same. Bettendorf is one of the Quad Cities along with neighboring Davenport, which we'll talk about in a minute, and then the other cities of Illinois, Moline, East Moline, and Rock Island. The Quad City total population is estimated to be about 382,000 in 2011. And just to kind of make this a little bit more clear picture, we'll have maps on our Instagram, but Bettendorf is located on the Mississippi River in southeastern Iowa. Right. 
So back to the timeline, you know, he was last seen that Wednesday, which is May 10th, 2017. Um, The next day, Thursday, May 11th, he had left his mom's house in the early hours with his cell phone. And we don't know what exactly time, but early hours. Right. Mm -hmm. And he also had a Bible and a black backpack. He said he would be back that evening. So he had plans on returning. Um, He didn't have much money with him when he left. And it's unknown if he went with someone. His dad, Jeff is quoted as saying, I did call him on the phone and talk to him. So I'm assuming that day, Thursday. And the quote goes on to say, he indicated that he would be home that night. Obviously, he never showed. We have not seen or heard from him since. Yeah, and his phone that he had was last used in the vicinity of Vanderveer Botanical Park in Davenport, Iowa, at about 12 o'clock noon the day that he disappeared, possibly last seen in the area of Vanderveer Park, June Park, which I could be pronouncing or wrong. Young Park, yeah, yeah J-U-N-G-E. Right, mm-hmm. or 35th Street at Harrison Street in um, Davenport. And that is the location of the Young Park. Right, right. Mm-hmm. His family has contacted as many of his friends as possible, asking if they have seen him, but I don't think anyone had any news on where he was. Right, so they started there, and they did report him missing two weeks later, May 26, 2017. And I was thinking about this, and I I think the reason that they did that is because, number one, David did live a lifestyle of kind of a wanderer, and he was known to hitch and travel and camp and go into the woods. But um, I, I also think he's a very private person. Right, and that yeah. his family was private before this happened. So the mother of David reported him or filed a missing persons report with the Bettendorf Police Department on May 26, 2017. Yeah, and his mom, Marilyn, um, she went to Buffalo, Iowa, 14 miles west of Bettendorf along the Mississippi River, and she was handing out flyers. Um, I walked the campground there as well, handing out more flyers. Please don't give up. Keep praying and keep looking. Someone knows something. If you saw him, if you gave him a ride, if you know where he was, anything, please help bring him home. And that's, you know, his mom, Marilyn, she's quoted as saying all of that. Right. So obviously this campground in Buffalo, which is, you said, 14 miles west Mm -hmm. of Bettendorf, it's probably a place where he would frequent as well. So that's all we have for the timeline. Not much of a timeline, but the weather the day he went missing, Thursday, May 11th, 2017, it was rainy and a little drizzly. And it is stated that he does not care for the cold or rain. But the temperature was 71 degrees as a high and the low temperature 54. So not that cold. But Mm -hmm. yeah, knowing that he didn't like the cold and rain, I wonder how much he was going to stay out of doors that day. What we do know is that he has not made contact with family, which is not normal, and he hasn't been seen since. Um, He enjoys camping and hiking, so outdoors like we talked about. He was going through some personal problems at the time of his disappearance, but his family said he has always kept in touch with them. And we're not sure what those personal problems are, but going through a tough time. And it's very unlikely that he didn't show up for Mother's Day or that he wouldn't show up to visit his mom, which was just a few days later, Sunday, May 14th. Yeah, three days later. Yeah, so, you know, he loves his family. He had plans on coming home that day. So I don't know what happened, but... So we're going to talk about possibilities now. And we are saying there's probably about three possibilities. The first one is that we want to talk about is these parks that he seems to like to go to. So it is stated by the police that he was possibly last seen in the area of Vanderveer Park, Young Park, which is 35th Street at Harrison in Davenport. Okay, so there's Vettendorf and then next door neighboring Davenport. The Vanderveer Botanical Park is 33 acres and it's in the historic district of Davenport, Iowa. It's believed to be one of the first botanical parks west of the Mississippi River, and the park was listed on the Davenport Register of Historic Properties on August 4th, 1993. Young Park is a 75-acre park located at 3250 Western Avenue, and it has six baseball diamonds, 
a Duck Creek Recreation Trail, playground, reservable shelters, restrooms, a community shelter, and it's home to the Davenport Parks and Rec Youth Softball, and also the Girls Little League Softball. So a lot of activities there that you can do. Yeah, 33 acres and 75 acres, pretty big parks. Right. And the crime rate in Davenport, which is where these parks are, um, this is ranked on a scale from one being low to 100 being high. The violent crime is 55.9, and the U.S. average is 31.1. The property crime in Davenport is 57, and the U.S. average is 38. So a little higher than you'd want yeah. in Davenport. Mm-hmm. And then going back to his hometown, Bettendorf, the crime, again, ranked on a scale of 1 to 100. The violent crime is 15.3, U.S. average 30. 31.1 and the property crime is 22.5 and US average 38.1. Yeah, and Bettendorf is neighboring to Davenport. We assumed he walked from his house to these parks, mm-hmm. which we said was about an hour walk. Those are pretty big differences, though. I mean, high 50s to right. 15 and 22. The difference you know. a neighborhood could make. Exactly. However, he, he was a BMX rider, so he could have been riding his bike throughout towns, and it's only about a four-mile distance between the two. So he'd get there quite quickly. Exactly, yeah. So that possibility of the crime rate in Davenport around the parks is the first one we considered that maybe there was some foul play. Another possibility is, you know, he rides these bicycles. He could have a concussion. I mean, I even have friends that ride BMX and... They've gotten really bad injuries before. It, he he did have injuries from BMX riding. Right. It's stated, and it is a very dangerous sport. So a concussion is a is a big possibility for when you're doing BMX riding, and it's a mild traumatic brain injury that usually happens after a blow to the head. You don't have to lose consciousness to get a concussion, and it can create post concussion syndrome. In fact, the risk of post-concussion syndrome, or PCS, doesn't appear to be associated with the severity of the initial injury. And in most people, symptoms occur within the first 7 to 10 days and go away within 3 months. Sometimes they can persist for a year or more. There was another case that went nationwide. His name was Brian Histand. He was 25, and he vanished in May of 2013. Um, His father was thought that he maybe rode without a helmet sometimes and had suffered a concussion from repeated knocks to the head and that he endured on his bike. So he was confused a couple days prior to disappearing due to a possible concussion. So this is a serious issue, you know, a medical issue. Right, and there's football players that even suffer... TBI or traumatic brain injury from uh, knocks to the head and things. So you can, you know, the symptoms are you can have headaches, dizziness, fatigue, irritability, anxiety, insomnia, loss of concentration and memory, ringing in the ears, blurry vision, noise and light sensitivity, uh, and it can decrease your taste and smell. And these may be associated with a neck injury as well that happened at the same time as a head injury. And young men between the ages of about 17 and 25 are most at risk of a mild to moderate traumatic brain injury, also known as TBI, leading to concussions and sometimes to PCS. Right. And some people are seem to be able to have multiple concussions without developing PCS, and others, the smallest knock on the head can create post-concussion syndrome. So it's, it's a very individualized thing. And multiple head injuries, uh, serious emotional or psychiatric problems, alcohol and sub- substance abuse all increase the potential for a significant PCS. So this is a possibility that he might be out there wandering. Right. And with if he does have a concussion, he, he might not know where he's at or who he's with. You know, he's not fully aware of what's going on around him. Right. He might not have the capability to make good decisions mm-hmm. and realize where he is or what he's doing. Definitely based on the lifestyle that he has previously lived, kind of a wanderer, nomadic lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So that leads into our third possibility, which is he liked to take trains, and he de- his father is quoted as saying he will hitchhike. 
Yeah, there's, there's a quote from a friend named Michael. It says, when I first met David, he was just about to board his Amtrak and head west towards Denver, and I consoled him and let him know that everything was going to be okay. Over these couple years following him on Facebook, I realized he's been dependent quite some bit on drugs and substances. I really feel for my brother, but it's in all the choices we make. I really hope that wherever David is out here on the road, he is safe, healthy, and happy. Your loved brother, safe travels wherever you are. Right, and his mom responded to that and said, thank you for taking David under your wing, so to speak, when he went to Colorado. He talked very highly of you all the time. You taught him so many skills he would need and used. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for all you did for David. He really loved you. And there was a comment asked if he would hitchhike, and his dad had replied with, yes, he would, and he has before. He's capable of living on the streets and traveling across the country. He's traveled to California and to Florida by hitchhiking, so he really could have gone anywhere. So share this, everyone, please. Let him know we love him, and we want to know he's okay and would love for him to come home. Right, and, you know, it said he didn't have a car, and I it seems like he doesn't really like driving or yeah, I don't know if he has a driver's license or if he just, you know, walks everywhere and, BM, you know, his bicycle everywhere. He does like the train, so that's another mode of transportation, but he could be driving a car. It could have car. changed. Yeah. He could have ended up in another part of the country and started driving a car. Yeah. So I wouldn't l- eliminate that as a possibility seen in a vehicle. So other places that David might be seen are just to get to know him a little bit. A a little bit more. A friend stated that David also really enjoys a tan and his hair long. He might be shirtless, showing off more tattoos at the beach. He's a beach explorer, so perhaps that might be helpful. And he's always, and that's always, in touch with his family. So him missing is very uncharacteristic. He could be attending a church or church-affiliated gatherings and sometimes camps out in nature for some peace and quiet and loves a good meal. He needs cigarettes, huge smoker, and he can be very social or he can keep to himself depending on the day. He interacts with everyone he meets, stays up late, gets up pretty early, walks around a lot, and probably has a backpack, likes an assorted collection of keys or other cool stuff he may find, He appreciates beauty where it can be found and picks up litter and trash wherever he goes. Yeah, and there's another quote by his dad. Um, It says that it's very much unlike him to go without at least talking to one of his friends or even his mother. He and his mom were very close. It would be very unusual for him not to contact her on a regular basis. So this young man is truly loved by his family and friends and greatly missed and it, I would love for this information to get out nationwide and his photo to get out and also any information that we can share. You can look up more pictures of him on their Facebook page. I found an actual group page for him called Bring David McAllister Home. They have photos, people commenting, just a big community wanting him home. And you can also contact the Bettendorf Police Department And they are asking for the public's help in locating David. And their phone number is 563-344-4015. Or you can contact Crime Stoppers tip line at 309-762-9500. All tips are secure and anonymous. Yeah, and if you have any information, you can always email us at mysteriouslymissing411 at gmail.com. Check out our Instagram page, which is mysteriouslymissing. We'll have maps and pictures up on there. We are working on getting our Facebook page up as well. You can find us on YouTube, and our podcast will be on iTunes. Yeah, get David's picture out there. Yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you. Please like, share, subscribe to this podcast so that others can bring more awareness to this case and help family and friends bring their loved ones home.